Hey, and welcome to another episode of Cooking with Dorsha. Today, I have a hashtag one dish for you. That's when I teach you how to make exactly one dish. And this dish just so happens to be, it can be the entire dish, but I would recommend maybe a leafy green salad on the side. So today, I'm going to teach you how to make Spaghetti squash, yes, spaghetti squash. You have you seen this in the store before? They come in different sizes. This is a pretty hefty size, but yes, I'm gonna teach you how to make a spaghetti squash boat, okay? And so let me share with you some of the ingredients that are going. So of course you have that. I'm gonna show you how to cut it, and um, then we're gonna roast it, and then we're gonna do the part that makes it spaghetti squash. Um, also, I have some ground turkey, and we're going to cook that. I have um, small sweet onion. I have a couple of cloves of fresh garlic, red bell pepper. I have some sun-dried tomatoes, sun-dried tomato pesto, Italian herbs. Now this right here. You should keep this in your refrigerator. Do you hear me? Keep this in your refrigerator, this is so good. I'm gonna top it with Italian style cheese um, later on. But I do have some extra virgin olive oil. You'll need some of that. I have some Himalayan pink salt, but you don't have to. That's just what I'm using. I have some pepper. But the other thing that you may need to get, you keep this garlic parmesan. Oh my God, it is so delicious. Okay, so we have all of that and we're gonna create something beautiful together. Cause on YouTube, sharing is caring. And if you like this video, I need you to share this video. Like it, comment, share, okay? But first, if you have not subscribed to the channel, subscribe, turn on the little notification bell so that you'll know when new content is uploaded. And let's get to it, spaghetti squash, yes! Yeah. Okay, so here's our spaghetti squash. I rinsed it off, I dried it. I just do that because it's gonna be cooking on both sides and you don't want any of the residual dirt from wherever it was to um, contaminate your food. So, this knife that I have, it is very sharp. It is German steel. So it will cut through this. And um, I would say to you to invest in a um, good set of knives. Because if not, then you would actually have to um, bake this a little bit to soften it before you could cut it. Because it is hard. And I'm not even taking it all the way down yet. I'm just getting it so I'm trying to make sure that this is even. Do you see that? I want to make sure that it's even. I hope I didn't take you all the way out of the camera. <laughs> Voila! And here you have it. Now, you're like, what in the world is all of that? These are the seeds. And if you're in a garden community, you might want to set these wonderful seeds aside and um, dry them so you can plant them. So I take a spoon. This is a pretty big spoon. And I scrape the inside. Look at this. You see this? We don't need it. We don't want it. And we don't need it. Make sure all the seeds are out. And you can also see some of the stringiness that's going on inside of this. Once again, take the spoon, tear down. Very simple, really. Boom.
Look, you see the stringiness? Yeah, so it's gonna be even more once we finish. So, I have the seeds. Now, preparing these to roast. Get a cookie sheet. I ran out of parchment paper, but I would normally put parchment paper on there, but you don't have to. You can see that you don't have to because I'm not going to. And I have both of them. I'm going to take some extra virgin olive oil. Put some in here. I'm gonna put some in here. Uh, it's basically like a teaspoon. And I'm going to take my brush and brush that on through. You see that? Yes. Brush it. Mmm. Hmm. That extra virgin olive oil smells good. Now, you can dab it with butter if you prefer. But I like that extra virgin olive oil for this. Um, take some pepper and lightly coat it with black pepper. I'm gonna take my Himalayan pink salt. Yes. Okay. Now, you're going to turn these facing down. Facing down. Then I'm going to take a little paring knife and I'm going to stab it. <laughs> These little holes. Now be careful with this because, honey, paring knives are sharp. And you could do a fork if you prefer. This uh, skin is hard and so I don't want to use my forks on this. I'd rather use my parent knife that can take a licking and keep on ticking. This is gonna help it cook faster. And there you have it. I'm gonna put these in the oven, uh, my preheated oven, 400 degrees for 40 minutes, okay? Um, while this is in the oven, I'm going to prepare the filling, which is which will consist of the ground turkey and the vegetables. So, okay, and I could skip this part, but I was like, let me go ahead and show how I'm gonna cut this onion. Um, because some people who may be new to this channel may not know how to cut an onion. Yes, at one point in life, I didn't know how to cut the onion. Uh, I just make little slits. And here we are. And there we have it, okay? And I'm gonna put them into ramekins to just make it easier when I go over to that side of the stove and I start cooking. Once again. And there's little lines on the onion to me. It's almost like they were put there because they knew that they were gonna get cut. You know what I'm saying? Turn it around to the other side. Um, if you have a large knife, this makes it um, easier because it cuts right through. And there you have it. Look at that.
some of it has spilled, but I'm not going to spend time and be late for that. But what I do want to do is clear this off so I can also show you how to do the garlic. Well, how I do the garlic. You can do the garlic however you want to. But I hit it, I crush it. It makes it easier to take the skin off. See? Voila! It's even better when um, it's a large piece of garlic, when it's smaller and you're trying to do this. So it's like, oh, you can squash, uh, squash the whole thing. Once again, and I did that one really good. Once again, having a large knife like this makes it so simple and easy. And I have a little resistant piece of skin. There you go, see? Now, you can do the same thing as far as the slicing. And then, Now I'm going to place it in this way. And the knife is actually going down like this. And then you can create a cadence and a sort of a rhythm. Now, I do have a garlic press and you could do that as well. But just for this little bit of garlic, it is not even worth it for me. So it might be worth it to you. You can also get some minced garlic. See this? You can get some minced garlic from the grocery store. And that can serve as well. I just think the fresh garlic, it has a, ro a robust um, a flavor and smell to it. I just really, really like it. So uh, we have all of those and then I'm also going to add these but I'm not going to add these to my chopping board okay and um yeah I'm gonna chop these up finally not really finally loosely though and I'm gonna add this so stay tuned so there we have it um don't they look good mmm to a hot skillet, I'm gonna add some extra virgin olive oil. Push that around a little bit. I'm going to add, and earlier I said it was ground um, turkey, but it's not, it's ground chicken. I wanted ground um, turkey, but the store, Walmart was completely out of ground turkey. It was absolutely insane. They were a lot, a lot of stuff, so I don't know what that's about, but ground chicken. So we're going to brown this, and then we're going to begin to season it. Now, I do want to show you something that this ends up having water because it's poultry unlike beef that would have animal fat if we were making like a marinara type of sauce then i wouldn't be so concerned with it but because that's not the vibe of what we're doing with our spaghetti squash we're going to need to drain this okay we have the ground chicken Drain. Now you should hear it crackle. You hear that? That's exactly where you want it. That crackling noise. <clears throat> Add some black pepper. And you see this? The garlic parmesan. Garlic parmesan is going to become your new best friend. Oh, it's so delicious. And add that. Stir it 
stir that a little bit. Make sure you um, break the chicken down as much as you can. Okay, now on to our vegetables. In the same skillet that I did the chicken, I want to add a little more olive oil, extra virgin olive oil. Move it around a little bit. Now my heat is on medium high, and I'm going to start with my garlic. Make sure you get all of it, put all of it in there. Okay. Move it around the pan. Oh, it smells so delicious. I promise you. Now, we're going to take the onion. I'm going to add the onion. There's not a whole lot of dishes that, you know, I don't use garlic and onion. Or garlic and onion powder. I mean, it's just something about garlic and onion. God knew what he was doing, I promise you. Let that cook down for a little bit. Mmm, it smells so good. Now, we're going to add our red bell pepper. Mmm, absolutely amazing. Now, you can do substitutions, right? Let's say you want green, yellow, orange, the grill of peppers, or any other type of pepper that you may want. You may want to add some spice to it and add some jalapeno peppers. That would be delicious. some pepper and now I'm going to add my chicken mm. smells so good and as you see all the oil is absorbed and that's exactly how you want it. A little now I'm going to add my sun dried tomatoes. I'm going to add a two teaspoons of the sun dried tomatoes. Pesto. And I'm going to add the Italian herb. And just make sure that that is dispersed all the way through. And it smells absolutely delicious mm, absolutely delicious I'm gonna add a little bit more of our garlic parmesan. And you can add some of the pink Himalayas um, salt or some regular salt or some kosher salt, whatever you want to do. But season that to taste, okay? 
voila. Okay, I just had an epic fail in my recording. What? I, <laughs> I thought I was recording, but it took a picture. I took the empty um, squash, and I took a fork, and I just went around the side, and I kept going almost down to the skin. I took as much as I could throughout. And then I tossed it a little bit while it remains in here. And then I started adding my meat. Um, a little bit on this side, a little bit on this side, and then I just mixed it in together. What I did say you could do that could make this easier for you is once you scrape the sides and get the spaghetti squash, you can dump it into a bowl, all of it into a bowl, mix all of your meat, and then just put them back in there. But this is how I do it because I didn't feel like messing up another dish when I can just work it in there with my hands. So this is what it looks like. Mm. And each person will get a half. Now, if you have a larger family, you would of course have to make more. Or you could cut them in half, you know. Now I'm gonna top them with the cheese. And of course, you don't have to do this part. But uh, yes, it is delicious. Yes. And I'm gonna put it back into the oven until the cheese melts. And then I will show you what the final product looks like. But there you have it. Okay, so the moment of truth. Our spaghetti squash bowls. Bam! Look at them. Absolutely delicious. And they smell out of this world. Like this whole house is permeating with this, okay? Now, I'm so sorry that I had a um, recording faux pas and you weren't able to see how I scraped the sides in. I want to also add it's not just the sides but also the bottom as well but it's like once I start with the sides like you have the whole bowl and then I'm going on one side like this all the way down to the bottom and then the next one all the way down to the bottom so I don't want you to think that you're not supposed to get the bottom you're supposed to get all of the spaghetti squash and then like I said you can dump it, dump it all into a bowl and mix all your meat in there and then just put them back in there or you can just do what I did, you know? Anyway, look at it. This is going to be awesome. And you can do substitutes. You don't have to do the ground chicken. You could do Italian sausage. Uh, you could do ground beef or ground chuck, preferably. Uh, you could do uh, chorizo sausage. You could do whatever you want to do, right? Or you cannot put any meat in it at all and just do a vegetable medley, but season it the same way that I season the chicken. And voila, there you have it. You don't have to add the cheese on top. And if you're in the vegan stuff, you can just put your vegan cheese on top. Whoop. So there you have it. And you could do like a, a spinach or a little kale salad on the side to get your roughage. And so there you have it. Spaghetti squash bowls. Hmm. Hashtag one dish. Hashtag cooking with Dorsha. And until next time. And don't forget, sharing is caring. Give this video a thumbs up. Share, subscribe, like, and let it do what it do.